centuries in darkness, all of creation waited eagerly with a growing hope for a savior. And throughout the ages, this hope could not dim as men and women of God saw brief glimpses of the divine, their spirits lifted by an unrelenting expectation of something magnificent that was yet to come. They wrote of a star that would come forth from Jacob, for unto us a child is born, the Prince of Peace. He shall be called Emmanuel, and his throne would be established forever. And now in a place least expected, hope has arrived. Imagine the scene as the celestial curtain was pulled aside with angels singing and radiant beams of God's love cascading downward. It is something more than anyone could ever hope or even dream. The spectacular arrival of the Messiah, Jesus Christ.
In Nazareth, Joseph the carpenter has been introduced to Mary, a girl from the village. With the blessing of her father, Mary and Joseph are now betrothed, promised to each other in marriage. Soon after, when Mary was alone, God sent an angel to speak to her. Mary, do not be afraid, for you have been chosen. You will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be supreme, and he'll be known as the Son of the Most High. His kingdom will reign forever. ever. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will cover you. The Holy Child you will give birth to will be called the Son of God. Nothing is impossible with God. Upon hearing this, Mary treasured and pondered all these things in her heart. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? Oh, the blind will see, and the deaf will hear, and the dead will live. Your baby boy would one day rule the nations. Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? And this sleeping child you're holding is the great. Christ shall come with shouts. 
clouds of acclamation to take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? In I found in her adoration and then proclaim, My God, how great thou art! Then sing. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, it became time for the baby to be born. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
the greatest gift ever given to mankind was a child born in a humble stable. A savior who would bring God's magnificent light into this darkened world. The birth of Jesus, the Son of God, was caused for a wonderful and glorious celebration and it is one that we're all reminded of this time of year. And those very first gifts of Christmas were given over 2,000 years ago, coming from a most unexpected source. For far from Israel, wise men in the East were preparing for a great journey to see with their own eyes the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. And they would bring more than just their praise and adulation. Along the journey, they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The first gifts of Christmas. The story of how these stargazers discovered their destiny is extraordinary. For the revelation of Christ's birth was a message written within the stars, a celestial mystery unlocked by these wise men. Their passion was to study the heavens. As they watched and charted those distant lights that ignited the atmosphere with splendorous wonder. And yet something was about to happen that would change them forever. For on this night, a new star appeared in the skies above, beckoning them, heralding the arrival of a new king born. Yet it was not just any king, or even a great king. It was the king of kings. And so these wise men set out on unimagined paths, humbly following the star to their newborn king. The heavens now blazed a message for eternity had whispered its welcome, Come, come see Emmanuel, God with us. <laughs> Nearby, there were shepherds watching over their flocks of sheep by night something they had done so many other nights before this. As they settled down for the evening, all was calm. And by all appearances, the day would end as any other ordinary day would. But unbeknownst to them, a wondrous moment would soon take place. A moment that had been planned since the beginning of time. God had now drawn near. And for these shepherds, this night was about to become anything but ordinary.
Wise men and shepherds alike were filled with great joy, bowing down to worship the King of Kings. Generations of the hopeful had waited in anticipation for this very moment. The Messiah, promised long ago, was here. As the good news spread across the countryside, the world would never be the same. Today, wise men still look to the skies for we know that once more the Savior will return. And once more there will be great joy as every knee shall bow to worship Jesus, 
the Messiah, the King of Kings. Just where we go And help us to be Guide us 
prayer. I know it's the prayer of every person who has been a, a part of these amazing, this is the sixth performance and seeing these young people use their talents. Most of them are our people. We brought in a few musicians that uh, the sax player, but they're all connected to the church. His brother-in-law is backstage and part of our staff and just amazing people. These dancers, these worship leaders that are doing most of the solos they are from our different campuses and tech teams and people and our one desire is to give all the glory and all the honor and all the praise to Jesus this Christmas we really want to give him to you we really 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 long and desire that people would know that he's real there's no one like him. And I guess this Christmas uh, is very special. We started on Friday night and um, my son, my youngest child, we have four girls and a, and a boy and my son and his wife, Jamie Drake, my son and his wife, Drake, Jamie, uh, had their baby Friday. So we had to leave and and there she is. Now, tell somebody beside you, that is the prettiest baby I have ever seen in my life. She got her hair for me, obviously. But we're so proud of you, and I know that they're watching. I know Sharice is in D.C. with them and all the family there. And we love you so much. Love that little baby. When a baby is born, two questions once the sex is determined and someone says, you know, it's, it's, it's a boy. They had a girl. There are two questions that you inevitably hear every time. The first question is, well, how big is the baby? How much did he weigh? How, how tall is it? In 1879, according to Guinness book of world records, the tallest married couple got married she was seven feet, 11 inches, and her husband was seven feet, nine inches. And amazingly, a few years later, they had a baby that was 28 inches long. That's over two feet. <laughs> and it weighed 22 pounds, ladies, 22 pounds. All the women said, bless her heart. Come on, let me, can you imagine? <laughs> A 22-pound baby. I mean, they took that baby from the hospital and enrolled it in college the next day. I'm sure that they had to shave him before they got him home. I cannot believe that. I couldn't believe that. That's a big baby. 
And imagine with me when news reached the community, the little community where Mary and Joseph lived. She had her baby. Mary had her baby. And somebody says, oh, really? Really? Yes. Well, how big of a baby was it? They could not imagine how big that baby was. It was bigger than anything they could comprehend. That baby was bigger than the manger. It was bigger than Bethlehem, the city. It was so big that in Isaiah 40 and verse 12, it said that he could measure the seas in the hollow of his hand. It said he could meter out the heavens with a span. A span is from that finger to that finger. And he held the heavens and galaxies and stars and threw them out like diamonds against black velvet because that's how big this baby was. He weighed the mountains in their balance, Isaiah said. And he said in Isaiah 40, 15, the nations are but a, a drop in the bucket to how big this God who came to earth is. The islands are just a little thing. They're counted as small dust. And then he says in verse 22, it is he that sits upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants are as grasshoppers. God Almighty in heaven came down to earth and allowed himself to be encased in human flesh and carried around in the body of a virgin named Mary. He came. Eight pounds of God. He came. He was bigger than Caesar. He was bigger than Herod. He was bigger than the religious community. He was bigger than the high priests, the Pharisees, and the scribes. I jotted down some things. I thought, how big of a boy was he? Well, I know in the New Testament, he was bigger than leprosy because he healed it. He was bigger than blindness. He was bigger than lameness. He was bigger than deafness. He was bigger than blood disease. He was bigger than a withered hand. He was bigger than epilepsy. He was bigger than demon possession. Somebody needs to be comforted this year because you lost someone near and dear to you. And I've here, I'm here today to proclaim that according to this book, he was even bigger than death. He was bigger than the tomb of Lazarus and the grave that they had left him in. But he called him forth and he came out alive. He was even bigger than hell, the one that was born. For he went down and descended into hell and Strip the keys from Satan. Satan is so defeated, he doesn't even have the keys to his own house. That's what Jesus did for you. But let me make it personal for just a moment. He's bigger than your diabetes. He's bigger than your cancer. He's bigger than your heart disease. He's bigger than your back pain, your bone disease, your arthritis, your stomach issues. He's bigger. Somebody needs to know today he's bigger than your anxiety. He's bigger than your panic attacks. He's bigger than your fear. He's bigger than your depression. That baby that was born, he is a big God. That's why we celebrate him because he's bigger than the storm you may be going through, the valley. He's bigger than the giant you may be facing. He's bigger than legal problems. He's bigger than financial problems. We serve a big God. He's bigger than the backsliding of America. He's bigging. He's bigger than your addiction. He's bigger than your sin. He's bigger than your habit. He's bigger than your sexual sin. He's bigger than your pills. He's bigger than your drinking issue. He's bigger than your marital issues. Somebody needs to know he's bigger than your past. He's bigger than your failure. He's bigger than your condemnation. He's bigger than your shame. He's bigger than your hurts. He's bigger than your offense. He's bigger than the division in your family. He's bigger than your wounds. He's bigger than your unforgiveness. He's bigger than 
You're not speaking to your own flesh and blood anymore. He's bigger than your dysfunction. He's bigger than how you were raised or what happened to you when you were a child. He's bigger than your separation. He's bigger than your divorce. He's a big God. And he's able to do anything. The message of Christmas is all things are possible with God. He's a big God, bigger than anything. And the second question in the last part of my little sermon this morning, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. I've done this six times and I hadn't cried yet. But for some reason, I feel God's presence in this room. I really do. The next question, the last question people ask, turn to somebody and say, the pastor's mascara is running now. What are we going to do? They always ask, what did they name him? What did they name her? What's his name? That's the question men ask and women throughout the scriptures over and over and over. When Jacob wrestled with the angel, he said, tell me her name. When Moses stood at the burning bush, he said, I want to know what your name is. This God that's speaking to me through this burning bush. I want to know your name. Whom shall I say sent me when I go to Pharaoh with the message you've given me? I want to know your name throughout all the scriptures they're asking. Maybe one of the most astounding places that you can see Jesus thousands of years before he manifests in the flesh in the New Testament is in the book of Proverbs, the 30th chapter. And there a man by the name of Agur begins to get a vision of a coming Messiah. And he said, who is this one who ascended into heaven? But then he descended. I saw God coming down from heaven to earth. Who is this God who gathers the wind in his fist? He saw Jesus on the bow of that boat when the disciples were in the storm and he reached out and he grabbed the wind in his fist and said, peace be still. And the waves laid down and the disciples said, what manner of man is this that even the winds obey his will? He saw it thousands of years before. He said, who is this who has bound the waters in his garment, there's something in the hem of his garment. He saw the woman in Mark chapter 5 touching the hem of his garment and her blood that was diseased being healed and she was made whole. He saw Jesus walking on the water and the only thing that was sinking was the hem of Jesus as it got wet. And he said, I see a garment bound with water. And he saw Simon Peter sinking and Jesus reached down and picked him up. And what Simon couldn't do by himself when Jesus took him by the hand. Some of you are trying to do it all by yourself. And if you just take Jesus by the hand, they, they plural, they walk back to the boat. He couldn't do it alone. But when you connect with Jesus, doors open, mountains move, resources come because when you get Jesus, you get everything. Why don't you put your hands together and give him a great praise? Oh, what a gift he gave us. What's his name? What's his name? The Bible said in Matthew chapter one that the name finally showed up on planet earth. She shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. Everybody say that name with me, Jesus. Say it one more time in overflow. Come on, everybody. Jesus. Isaiah 9 and 6 said unto us, a child is born, a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful. Have you lost the wonder? Is it just an old story to you? Can you hear these songs and not ever be moved? Never lose the wonder. Before he's mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, all of those things, you have to see him as wonderful. It's wonderful that he loved an old wretch like me. It's wonderful that he would never give up on me. It's wonderful that he kept reaching for me when I didn't even believe in myself. He kept believing in me. And he believes in you. He knows everything about you and he still loves you. 
What's his name? What's his name? Acts 4 and 12 said, Neither is there salvation in any other name. I respect your religion, but there's no other name that is given that can bring salvation. And then I want you to read Philippians 2 as they put it on the screen. Everybody out loud. Ready? Say this out loud. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those beneath the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. I'm here today to proclaim the mighty name of Jesus. There's power in his name. Depression has to leave this Christmas in the name of Jesus. Fear and anxiety and hopelessness and loneliness and despair has to leave your house in Jesus' name. His name is Jesus. And everything changes when you use that name. Would you stand to your feet? There's a song that's coming, the grand finale. But before it does, I want you to worship with me just a moment. Jesus, Jesus, everybody sing it. Jesus, there's something about that name. Master, say.
the Lord. Sing, we give him all the glory we give him all. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Let's fill this room with his praise. We pray this prayer Jesus be Lord of my life be Lord of my family you're bigger than any problem you're mightier and your name is stronger and we run to you and we put ourselves in your arms your loving arms you could have left me alone but you came to where I was and I receive you today in Jesus name. There was a young girl here a few weeks ago who wrote a song and she just posted it on online and it has gotten like 10 million views. And she stood right up on that platform. Her name is um, Charity Gale. Thank you. Charity Gale. Charity Gale. And she stood on that platform a few weeks ago and she sung this song and I, I asked them, would they just sing? It's going to take two minutes. It won't even take two minutes, but would they sing it over you and over your family this Christmas? I want you to receive the power of the name of Jesus over you, over every sickness, over every problem and over your family this Christmas. Your 